I'm Edna Boyle. This is my husband, Tex. And all this week at Tex Ned to Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium, it's lawn ornament days. Right, Tex? That's right, Edna. That's right, Tex. We've got hundreds and hundreds of wood choppers with propellers in their backs. The wind blows and the little chopper chops. <laughs> but don't look too close. He's not anatomically correct, right, Tex? That's right, Edna. We got mallards in flights and elves that lay about with a ripsaw on presidential lawn jockeys. Here's Zachary Taylor. He died of a busted belly after ingesting two pounds of fresh cherries and two quarts of milk. So come on down. It's lawn ornament days at Tex Ned and Boyle's Prairie Warehouse in Curio Emporium. We're giving away five pound bags of prohibitively expensive Timothy grass seed. Right, Tex? That's wrong, Edna. And if you say you saw this commercial, you get a free can of scat. That's right, keep dogs and cats away. No sense having your fists or juniper go yellow on you. Right, Tex? It's been too much, Edna. I won't leave you. Uh-oh. Somebody's a little cranky today. But it's all part of the fun down here at Tex Ned and Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. You. What's wrong, Tex? I'll see you in court. I'll take this with me probably up. Oh, I get. Now, oh. you have it. You have it. This is very sudden, Tex. Tex is ad living again, but he'll be back. So come on down to Lawn Ornament Days at Tex Ned to Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. Where are you going, Tex? For all your bad land needs. Let's Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. Catherine O'Hara, Martin Short, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. It's the most successful sitcom in television history with its timeless child star. I'm warning you, you're not getting any chocolate cake until you're through all your homework. A look at the career of Rusty Van Ruddick, now in his 29th season as television's favorite little boy. All right, team. And still the driving force behind the show's success. An intimate profile on the next Stars in One, coming soon. Hi, I'm Edna Boyle. Me and my sister Edith would like you to come on down and take Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium, where you find on sale this week only men's jacket, size 44 portly, trousers, men's ranch style Sansa belt, waist 36, 32 in seam. That's right. I've checked it many times in the past. Assorted cow head and bone bolo ties, trusses all kinds, boots and hats with fringe, wedding bands slightly dinted. Boot jacks one only, right, Edith? Uh, I guess so, Edna. <laughs> so come on down. We're located at Highway 1, just south of Meckling, where we had a summer home. Right, Edith? Ah, that's right, Edna. You heard the little lady. Get the hell off your butts and come on down to this fabulous sale. Although I wouldn't give you two cents for Tex Boyle's entire wardrobe. <laughs> if you ask me, Edna, you're better off without it. But who's asking me? <laughs> I've said enough, dear. You're a big girl. So get the hell off your butts and come on down. You're doing fine. That's Go ahead. right, Edith. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. You know, back on Mommy and Daddy's ranch, I'd come home from school, and I'd see the chickens there in the yard, and 
they'd be standing there and I'd throw them some pebbles and they'd go bark, 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 bark. And Tex would be there in the back with a hired hand shooting craps trying to win me a trousseau. He'd be saying, come on, you red devils, I feel hot tonight. And then we walked down the aisle and there was Tex with his hair slicked back looking so pretty, right, Edith? And he was saying to me, come on down, Edna. That was just the beginning. And this is the end, dear. It's over. You had 28 good years with a man. That's more than most people have. So let's get on with it. You got a business to run. There are people out there that need your bone, bolo, ties, and curios. I don't know what the hell you sell. <laughs> Just forget about everything. <laughs> don't let him down. That's right, Edith. I'm located two miles north of Spirit Mound. Jojo the giant prairie dog will be looking for you. So come on down to Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium for all your badland needs. I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. Right, Edith? That's right, dear. When I see commercials for beer and cigarettes on TV, everything looks great. People are outdoors riding bikes, sailing boats, some will even go out in balloons. But when I lay at my parents, well, for the longest time I thought I was going insane. People who drink and smoke on TV aren't all like my parents. Well, you could imagine how relieved I was to find all my friends' parents were just like mine. It's okay for advertisers to paint a different picture of life for their own profit. Well, let's not lie, little kids like me. I know what real life is like. This message has been brought to you by CCTA, Concerned Children for Truth in Advertising. And now a rebuttal from Concerned Advertisers. The advertising code ensures the consumer of realistic portrayals of lifestyle situations in all media. Conforming to these strict regulations is a delicate and expensive procedure, not only for the advertising community, but also for the cigarette manufacturers and alcohol distilleries across this great land of ours. Of course, there are isolated incidences of abuse, but for the most part, people really do frolic in meadows, ride bicycles down country lanes, and take trips in hot air balloons while smoking and drinking. The answer to the problem of adolescent abuse lies not in removing advertising from the media, but rather in taking the adolescent from the urban ghetto and placing him in the meadows or hot air balloons where he can enjoy cigarettes and alcohol in the environment they were meant to be consumed in. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some hang gliding to do. Advertising is a way of life. Your way of life. This message brought to you by NORCA, the national organization to reinstate cigarette advertising. Look, see here, you shyster cheek. I don't intend to be hornswoggle swindled by no double dealing Jasper Coop. Draw full of your pistol gun, you illegitimate bastard. Now you just hold on to your bandana kerchief there, Kincaid. Don't you know it's just the liquor drink talking? I'm still the lawman sheriff in these here territory parts. Oh, this galoot varmint ought to be hung lynched with rope lariat from the nearest hanging gallows. Melonville's own Western Redundancy Playhouse Theater proudly presents its new season of one-act dramas. And a pair of them stockings, socks, and some candy sweets for the youngin' kids, a bag of oatmeal cereal, and a bowl of fabric cloth. We got some new lamp lanterns in, and how you fix for potato splits. The drama of the real West, the big West, the wide open spaces where a man could find room for an extra word or part of speech. This place is giving me the creep willies, Jones. If it ain't being attacked by a band of murdering killers, it's being snuck up on by a gang of Indian redskins. It's all because of them new homestead settlers, Mota. They followed the trail paths in their covered corner stogas and chopped out all the Indians' forest wood to plant alfalfa hay for the ranch friends. Well, that's so fine dandy, John, but I'm still a scared afraid for our house. All right, okay, I'll put on my trouser pants as soon as I have another mug cup of this coffee jab and I'll load all the rifle guns. Join us for drama that has the reviewer, critics, and audience patrons alike rising from their seat chairs in thunderous applause clapping. See five single one-act play dramas for the cost price of four. Hi, I'm Edna Boyle of... In Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. Do you consider yourself an actor? Are you interested in the line of sales? Well, if you are, come on down to... And Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium, where all this week we're having auditions. That's right, auditions. Give it a try. Can you fill these empty boots? 
If you can, give it a try. Come on down. We've had hundreds of appliques, but none of them come close. See for yourself. Isn't that right, fella? That's right, partner. Thank you, dear. Right on, Edna. Thank you very much, dear. That's enough. <laughs> You'll be that new girl. Well, dear, that I wish you could have read the poop sheet you... more carefully, darling. We're looking for a man. A man? Ah, uh, no, told me. Fine. Ah, uh, good. Fine. I'll leave you my picture then. Well, that's all. Ah, uh, the picture is well, shut to hell really because it's old and I've had my hair it. changed since then. Isn't that right, fella? Yeah, that's right. Edna. I know, I know, I know the line. I, I, I just didn't. I wasn't feeling it. Can we, can we try that again? No, dear. Next. That's right, Edna. Ha, ha, ha. That's right, Edna. Are you better than that? If you are, come on down to... And Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. Give it a try. This is no cattle call. This is by appointment only. That's right. We're giving away free coffee and donuts. Professional nurse on duty. Get your ears pierced at the same time. So come on down. We're located off Highway 401. Just east of Mecklen. That's... And Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. You fill in the blank. Coming to SCTV. Sissy musician, bum. A compelling film with Eugene Fedor and Joan Crawford. Nice fingers, Mr. Beret. But what else can they do? <laughs> and now you come traipsing in here with your high society fashions and your big shoulders. Mom, well, we both know I'm no good for your son, but I can't help myself. New York Rhapsody, coming soon. Rusty Van Reddick, beloved child star of the most successful sitcom in television history, Oh That Rusty. The eight-year-old angelic persona who in 1954 captured the hearts of America and never let go. And now today, in its 29th season, Oh That Rusty remains the most popular situation comedy on television today. And its star, Rusty Van Reddick, now in his 40s, is still as enchanting as ever and is still playing eight. Hello, I'm Brock Linehan. Tonight on Stars and One, we look at the phenomenally timeless career of Rusty Van Reddick. 
Rusty Van Reddick. What is it about this red-haired, horn-rimmed dynamo that brings a tear to a mother's eye and dollar signs to a producer's? We talked to the executive producer of Oh, That Rusty, Hal Rosen. Everyone asks today, when we first started, what, 28 years ago, did we have any idea this whole schlamazzle would turn into what it became? The answer, uh-uh, wrong. We were just trying to do it. And we did it. And boy, did we do it! <laughs> the ingredients for good sitcom. Jokes and heartbreak. The kid had a quality of heartbreak, be it ours or his, whatever. As an actor, like Spencer Tracy, he has an ear, he listens. Now sure, by the mid-60s, uh, we were running into a bit of a rut. Uh, Rusty wasn't as comfortable with the character as he once was. Maybe the scripts were becoming a little too similar. It happens. All right, I'll talk to him. Rusty. I want you to show me what you did to your teacher. <laughs> All right, T. Whoa, ho, ho. In 1971, the format of Oh, That Rusty was changed, and actress Barbara B. Davis was unceremoniously dumped from the role of Rusty's mother. Today, better known as the pickle lady in the Schwartz's Red Hot Dill commercial, Barbara B. Davis reflects on her 17 seasons on Oh, That Rusty. He had the worst, worst breath I ever smelled on a human being. It was kind of like a, like a bad tooth smell. I, I had to do all my close-up scenes with him. Give me a break. He was, uh, he, he was obnoxious. He was, he was rude. He was disgusting. He, he was unprofessional to everybody on the set. Well, I, I, I wrote it on my book. And, uh, in 1971, they fired me. Well, they fired me because they said they wanted to make the show, the, the show more socially relevant. Baloney. <laughs> the, the kid had grown. They, they had to surround him with giants so that, so that, so, 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 so that he could still, still look eight. And the only person that, uh, uh, other only person that auditioned, the only one that could act was, was black. Rusty. Yeah, Dad. I'm warning you. You're not getting any chocolate cake until you threw all your homework. <laughs> Well, Dad, you said through. And today, Rusty Van Reddick, now 43, with over 1,200 episodes of Oh, That Rusty under his belt, remains television's favorite little boy, undaunted by an ongoing battle with weight, six failed marriages, including an ill-fated three-month liaison with actress Mamie Van Doren and his arrest in 1981 on four counts of shoplifting. Rusty Van Reddick is still the driving force behind Oh, That Rusty's success, keeping tight control over his character's timeless innocence and charm. Okay, the rewrite sucks. Now, what's going on in here? Uh, is it scene A or B you're having trouble with, Rusty? First of all, Doug, you have Rusty coming on to a little girl. He's eight years old, for God's sake. Now, think. <laughs> my dad is saying my aunt is coming to visit. I don't want her to come visit. You know, let's just stick to the confines of what the character is here. Uh, we, we thought, Rusty, that, uh, the little girl... the little girl! Who are you? Who is he? He's a new writer, Rusty. <laughs> yeah, he's fired! Oh! Oh, come on! Think! 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe we can, uh, redecorate the guest bedroom for the Ann or something. You know, I can get into some stickler like Lucy. Listen, studio audience. You were gracious enough to give us a big laugh there when I did my all-right tea. Uh, and if you could give us that again, right, it Rusty. really, really helps us in editing. <laughs> Sensational. Okay, let's do it again. Billy, do you remember your line this time? Right, Rusty. 
Fabulous. Okay. Let's have fun with it and action. <laughs> All right. See. We got a spinner hop through the wall, Rusty. Oh, ho, ho. have it. Television legend Rusty Van Reddick still going strong as a child star after 28 seasons. How long can he last? To quote the man himself, I'm timeless. I don't have to worry about that junk. <laughs> Until next week, this is Stars in One. I'm Brock Linehan. Enjoy. Soon on SCTV. Get out your 3D glasses and get ready for Death Motel. Oh, wait, let's get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. Roberto! Ah! Roberto! I'll go talk to the manager and I'll get him to give us another room. Wait, wait, don't leave me! Woody Tobias Jr. is at his horrifying best in Death Motel. Don't miss it. Hello, I'm Edna Boyle of Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium. There's been a change. That's right. Please address all future correspondents to Boyle's Emporium as follows. Her Grace, Edna, the Countess Boylina. Isn't that right, Your Grace? That's right, Edna, baby. That's right, Your Grace. For the next two weeks, Boyle's Warehouse and Curio Emporium will be closed as we journey to Europe. This is no frivolous vacation. We hope to reclaim His Grace's rightful throne... <laughs> His rightful throne in the Duchy of Saxe-Meinigen. Isn't that right, Your Grace? That's right, my little pumpkin poops. And when we return, come on down to Edna Boyle's Prairie Warehouse and Curio Emporium and see our newest addition, a little bit of Lichtenstein, where you'll find scabbards and blades, halberds and pikes, and organs for all your badland needs, right, Your Grace? Oh, that's right, my little Ipshin. That's absolutely right. Now, why don't you come down and sit on the old Count's knee, huh? On the royal knee. Oh, Your Grace. Easy, I was wounded in the Balkans. Oh. <laughs>